In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get an incredible vintage look inside of DaVinci Resolve, no matter what camera you're currently using. So I'm gonna show you how to take your clips from looking like this, to looking like this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to import my clips into DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna do some basic color space transform, some color management with my clips. And this has already been done. All I've done is I set my color management to the DaVinci HDR DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate and then the output to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, which is a pretty standard color management. So then all I have to do is in my edit tab, I just right click on my clips and then choose the input color space so that DaVinci Resolve will automatically convert them into the proper gamma and color space so that they've already been converted for me. Next, I am going to do some basic grading. So you can see here that I've added contrast and I've added saturation and a bit of warmth to a lot of my clips here. After that, I do want to give them more of a film look. And we're gonna do this by using two different tools inside of DaVinci Resolve stacked on top of each other. The first is film grain. I'm gonna show you my favorite film grain to use with the cameras that I shoot on, which primarily is the Sony a7S III. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to my edit tab and I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Now I already have adjustment layer favorited. I can drag it over to my timeline and I'm going to put it over all of my clips because all of these clips have been graded, they've been stabilized and they've been balanced. So they look as natural as I can get them while also looking somewhat filmic. So let's go ahead and go to this clip right here. Now this is my wife and son. We're spinning around in the trees, just having a grand old time. I'm gonna select my adjustment clip and I'm gonna go to my color tab. You can see here that I have the adjustment clip selected up here on top because this is my timeline, a mini version of my timeline here. And right here, my adjustment clip is selected as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna add film grain. So I'm just gonna search for grain right here and I'm gonna click and drag it onto the node right here. And it's gonna to default to doing film grain uh, kind of its own way. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the film grain that it puts on the clip itself, mainly because it's just very, it's just a very thick film grain. And I'm not just not a big fan of it. So you can see right here, if I go to the trees here and, and kind of zoom in on it, it looks pretty good. Like just out the gate, it does look great, but I wanna do my own film grain. My favorite film grain is actually going to be, if I scroll down here, and it's the 35 millimeter 200T film grain right here, because it's subtle enough that it doesn't overpower the clip, but it's also fine enough that it fits right at home with my 4K Sony a7S III, which is a very sharp camera. It produces an incredibly sharp image, especially with the lens that I was using in this case, which is the Zeiss 24 to 70 F4. It's incredibly sharp, uh, high quality lens. And so I just love the way this film grain looks. So you can see if I turn it off and this may not appear very well on YouTube. So I'll try to zoom in. I'll try to maximize it here and then turn it back on. You can see what it's doing here. It's just adding a very tasteful amount of grain. Now I can, if I want to, I can adjust the texture here and I can adjust the grain size here. And I can adjust some of the other things. So I can adjust the strength as well. So if I wanted to really increase the strength and just make it look very, very grainy, uh, then I could definitely do that. I think that's just a bit too strong. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of the clip here, zoom in on my son's face, and we're going to reduce that strength. That's just way too strong. So we'll go back to zero. So I have a baseline and then bring it up to probably about here. I think that's a very tasteful amount of grain. And so that's already looking really good in my opinion. Again, it's kind of hard to see on some of these clips. So maybe we'll go back to this clip right here. You can see here, you can see that grain. And I think that looks very tasteful. It looks really nice. So the next thing we're going to do to really give our clips an incredible filmic look is we're gonna add what's called halation. Now, I didn't even know this existed until I saw another YouTuber talk about this. And I think it is just such a tasteful look to really emulate that film look. Now. We're just emulating the film look, the characteristics of older film cameras and film lenses. We're not emulating the looks that are produced by the film camera itself, per se, like with the colors. That's that's another video for another time. But we just want to kind of emulate the lens effects and the film grain of a film camera. So I'm not going to do this on the same node because it'll they'll mess things up. So I'm just going to add another node here. 
Alt S, and we're going to type in halation, just H A L. And right here, we're going to click and drag this onto our clip. Now, the default settings are pretty strong. Uh, you can see here, look how strong the halation is on this. And if I disable and enable the halation, it's really, really strong. And so we're going to kind of adjust some of the parameters, play around with it until we have the look that we're, the desired look we're going for. So I'm going to zoom in right here. And I'm going to come here and let's go ahead and just start playing with some of the values here. So the threshold uh, is basically just how much of the image is affected by the halation. You can see here. So we're going to kind of turn it down, turn it, or we're going to turn it up like this. So it's not just grabbing everything because we would want a really subtle halation. Okay. Now I have these reds here. And we're going to kind of just adjust this until we get it to where we want it. We can reduce, we can even reduce the saturation if we like, but I kind of like that orange red. Again, it's a really tasteful kind of look. You can see here it has spread or you can make it more fine. So put it right about there. I think that looks really good. Again, it's just very subtle, but I think it just makes it look fantastic. Okay, maybe let's reduce, change our threshold just a little bit, just to add a little more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub through to some different parts of the footage here. Uh, so you can see right here, this is where it becomes really obvious. My son's forehead up against this black portion of the image. And you can see that halation really coming through. Look at that. And it's just so, it's just so tasteful and just so nice looking. And so if I click play on this, uh, again, the, the differences are very subtle and it just makes it look really, really nice. And so that's really it for this video. Very, very simple, but I think uh, awesome, powerful tools. If you're looking to kind of create a vintage look, adding film grain and halation are a really fast and easy way to do it. But this, of course, only works if you have a good foundation on your color grade, whether that's a color grade for how you wanted it to look to begin with, or if you were trying to emulate a film look color grade, then that needs to be, of course, I believe done first. And then you just have this be the gravy on the biscuit. Thanks again so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and share it with anyone who you think will find it useful. So until next time, thanks for watching.